Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 65. Here we have an amazing case. We got an axial T2 fat set image through the wrist, as well as a coronal T2 fat set image through the wrist with a glaring abnormality that I hope you guys can see. The question that I have for you is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? Is this a case of Deckwer veins, tenosynovitis, proximal intersection syndrome, distal intersection syndrome, or rheumatoid arthritis? What's the most likely diagnosis? When we take a look at the wrist here, remember that the dorsal or the posterior tendons here are all the extensor tendons. There's six compartments. And this first compartment here, along the more radial aspect, is thickened. The, the two tendons here are enlarged, and there's some fluid around the tendon sheath suggesting tenosynovitis. This is known as nothing other than Deckwer veins tenosynovitis. And this is a case of Deckwer veins tenosynovitis. This is not proximal intersection syndrome because that happens actually more proximally at the distal forearm. So in order for the first extensor compartment tendon to get more radially, it actually starts, you know, more immediately and it crosses over the second compartment. This here is a second compartment right here. So as it crosses over, it can result in a stenosing tenosynovitis between the first and second compartments. That's known as proximal intersection syndrome. That's in contrast to distal intersection syndrome, which happens at this level in the wrist where the third compartment tendon, the extensor pollicis longus, crosses over the second to get to the thumb because the EPL or the extensor pollicis longus inserts onto the volar base of the first distal phalanx at the thumb. So when it crosses over the second compartment, it results also in a stenosing tenosynovitis. But we don't see that here because the third looks pretty normal with the exception of very minimal fluid here and it's not crossing over at this site. And this is not a case of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory arthropathy. You'd expect there to be erosions in the bone, synovitis. You may have tenosynovitis of, of uh, different tendons, but particularly the EC where the sixth compartment tendon, the extensor carpi ulnaris, tends to be involved with tendinopathy and tenosynovitis. And the EC where the extensor carpi ulnaris is actually totally normal in this case. So this is not a case of rheumatoid arthritis making Deckwer veins tenosynovitis the most likely diagnosis. I want to talk a little bit about anatomy. The anatomy in the wrist is confusing. Here we have, you know, an axial T2 fat side image. This is the radius right here. This is Lister's tubercle right here. This is the ulna. Remember that these tendons anteriorly or volarly, these are all the flexor tendons. Many of these are within the carpal tunnel. The tendons or the dark structures here that are on the dorsal or posterior aspect of the wrist, these are the extensor tendons. And there's six extensor compartment tendons, right? So compartment one is right here between the you know, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis. Compartment two is right here, which is the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. The third compartment is just this one tendon here, the extensor pollicis longus. The fourth compartment is the extensor indices and extensor digitorum tendons. The fifth compartment is just a single extensor digiti minimi. And of course, the sixth compartment is the extensor carpi ulnaris right here. So there's six extensor compartment tendons in the wrist. Now, this was a case of Deckwer veins tenosynovitis. This reflects inflammation of the tendon sheets of the first extensor compartment tendon, as I said, the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. This typically manifests as tendinopathy or degeneration of the tendon, right? Usually you get thickening of the tendon or intermediate signal within the substance of the tendon that's not fluid bright, as you saw in this case. You can have fluid around the tendon sheath that suggests inflammation or tenosynovitis of that tendon sheath. This is also known as washerwoman sprain. Typically, this was for described in women who like were childbearing and they held babies next to their chest. So they would irritate their thumbs as they were holding the babies, hence known as washerwoman sprain. Uh, this typically presents, it can be asymptomatic or it can present with pain and typically along the base of the thumb. That's the most common uh, symptom uh, for a decor vein synovitis. And this is treated really conservatively, usually with rest, ice, some pain meds like Tylenol, Advil, you know, sometimes we can inject steroid into the tendon sheath at the first extensor compartment to relieve symptoms. Hope that was helpful. Thank you so much. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.